Hey everyone, my name is Jin, and in today's video, we're going to go over the concept of periodization and what periodization essentially is, is how you decide to dose exercises um, and workouts given a specific goal you want to meet um, at a certain point of time. And so this is, like I said, chapter 21 of the CSCS study guide, and there are different types of periodization. The first type is the general adaptation system and so it's really divided into three phases here the alarm phase the resistance phase and the supercompensation phase and so if you take a look here you start by introducing some kind of stressor right and that's training and other stressors so that's where you start and then the alarm phase is the initial phase of training where stimulus is first recognized and because of that um, the performance generally tends to decrease in response to fatigue right so this is the baseline here and this is before you start and this is the start right here and so performance generally decreases and then it can either go back up with the resistance phase and this is the second phase and that's when adaptations happen and system is returned to baseline or if you fail to adapt you can go into the over training phase and that's when stressors are too high and performance can be farther suppressed so resistance phase is the second phase and that's when adaptation occurs and now you've achieved the super compensation phase which is the new level of performance um, capacity that occurs in response to adaptive responses found in step two. And so that's one way to look at um, periodization, the general adaptation system. And then you have the stimulus fatigue recovery adaptation theory. It's basically saying the same thing, really. But let's take a look here. Training stimulus, you start here. And then with fatigue and acute response, when you first start, the performance level is going to dip, right? It dips and dips, and with recovery, now it's gonna return to baseline. And the idea is some kind of adaptation happens between here and here, so that gives you a little bit of a boost with overcompensation, or as we've seen in the previous uh, graph, it's super compensation, kind of goes hand in hand. And so your performance level increases over baseline, right? And then with detraining, the preparedness and performance tends to decrease. There's also a fitness fatigue paradigm. So taking a look at this graph here, um, it's easy to follow preparedness really. And preparedness goes hand in hand with performance. So when you initially start preparedness is down here and because whoops because fitness is elevated but the cumulative fatigue happens here as well the preparedness kind of goes up slightly but it still maintains below zero because of the overall fatigue but as you see the overall fatigue is going to go close to zero here and that's going to give the preparedness or performance a little bit of a boost, right? Preparedness is optimized as fatigue dissipates at a faster rate than fitness. And fitness is here, as you can see. So this is the most optimum level of preparedness, optimal level of preparedness, sorry, as fatigue nears zero. Um, couple important... Uh, concepts here in periodization cycle. So let's go over this. Um, Multi-year plan, you're thinking two to four years of training, annual training plan, annual one year, macro cycle, meso cycle, and micro cycle, right? So you have macro cycle several month to a year, right? So it's easier to take a look at this. Macro cycle is made up of a couple different meso cycles, and meso cycle is made up of a couple different micro cycles, right? So I'll write it here as well. 
Macro cycle is several months to one year. Meso cycle is two to three, uh, two to six weeks rather, sorry. So a month, give or take, right? And then you have micro cycle, micro cycle which is several days to two weeks. So I'm gonna write two weeks, okay? And then there are training days. So these are just days that make up weeks, right? So you got training day, and then training session is even shorter than that. And that's usually several hours. So important to know um, these cycles and how long they take usually. And this next graph, take a look at different phases at the bottom, right? Pre preparation phase, first transition phase, competition phase comes after, and then there's the second transition phase. Um, we're gonna come back to this graph because what I wanna do is define these phases first. That would make it a little more easy to comprehend the graph. And so there's four phases like we talked about earlier, preparation, first transition, competition, and second transition. So going back to this uh, slide here, preparatory phase is before the competition starts. So there's no competition um, and you tend to limit the technical and tactical work or sports spe specific work at this phase because you're looking for more of a general approach to build that foundation, right? So general goes, uh, tends to happen first. So general targets, development of general, like I said, physical base, and then you move on to more specific exercises and movement patterns um, because there's a shift in training focus and this happens only after the general preparatory phase. And then you get the hypertrophy strength endurance phase where it's a little bit of a low or moderate training intensity but with a high volume because what you're trying to do here is achieve hypertrophy and strength endurance. And then you get the basic strength phase. And this is more of a heavier load at a lower training volume. And this is specific to the muscles or movement patterns that the athlete requires for their sport. All right, so that is the first preparatory phase. And then moving on to the first transition phase, and that's really the link between preparatory and competitive phase there. So doing things like power exercises, power exercises where there's more explosive, explosive movements, sorry, at high loads with low volumes, right? Um, so you're giving them high loads by training that at a lower volume at this first transition phase. And then you get the competitive phase and this is really the in-season. Um, workout where you farther increase strength and intensity, but you want to reduce the volume because you don't want to push them too much during the competitive or in-season phase. And then second transition phase really is active rest period. So having said all that, let's come back here to this graph. Generally speaking, in the preparation phase technique, the quality isn't going to be at the highest, right? Because it's more focused on high volume and general um, exercises. And then once we move into that first transition phase, you can see the technique getting a little bit more of an attention. And then of course the volume is gonna decrease because now you want to really uh, focus on your craft and the technique. And then at this competition phase is where you want the focus on technique to peak, right? Because that's when it matters the most. And then of course, with the volume, it's going to decrease because you can't have both volume and technique. They don't go hand in hand. So you're more focused on certain things rather that's specific to your sport. So volume is gonna go down. And then like we talked about in second transition phase, this is active rest period. Um, or um, off-season phase, right? 
here volume decreases and it's at its lowest and then um, the athlete focuses on recovery so going to this slide here now um, there's different ways to phrase uh, different ways to categorize these phrases and split up annual training plan but they all really mean the same thing so we just talked about preparatory period which is more of a general um, period and then you have the competition period more specific and then transition period so you can split up preparatory period into transition phase and preparatory phase competition is still competition so like we talked about different ways to um, define or phrase it right preparatory phase is more of that off season second transition pay phase period is preseason all right and then competition is more in season and then you finally get that postseason and here are things that you want to focus on during these periods so hypertrophy basic strength hypertrophy basic strength and active rest during off season so more general right more variety and high volume preseason it's a little more specific so more explosive movements that require less um, reps but higher loads so you get uh, strength and power basic strength still and then in season it's really all about maintenance and postseason finally active rest so here's a really good chart to take a look at it really describes what I just talked about with this chart here right so you get the preparatory phase first transition phase competition phase and second transition phase so um, preparatory you can divide it into general and specific preparatory like we talked about earlier and that's still part of off season in general you focus on hypertrophy and strength endurance so of course you're going to use low to moderate intensity um, exercises with 50 to 75 percent of one rep max right so focusing on hypertrophy it's going to be high rep low load now with specific preparatory now you start to get a little more focused on what you truly need for the sport and so basic strength comes into play high intensity at about 80 to 95 percent of one rep max and then you're doing moderate to high volume to build that strength and moving on to the preseason, and we're nearing the competition phase here we're focusing on strength and power and so it's going to be low it's going to vary right low if you're doing 30 to 85 percent of one rep max or very high if you're doing 87 to 95 percent of one rep max um, so low volume generally speaking because we're doing two to five sets of two to five reps so that's preseason now going into competition there's two different ways to look at it you want to either focus on peaking or maintenance if you're doing peaking again this varies a lot very high to very low depending on the needs of the athlete and so it's going to be very low very low volume here if you're deciding to go with low and then if you're doing maintenance work you want to do moderate to high because you want to keep the momentum going and so you want to do two to five sets of three to six uh, reps right second transition phase um, it's post competitive um, phase so it's post season and you focus more on active rest so there's one more uh, concept we need to talk about undulating versus linear periodization linear periodization is more of a traditional approach where you use same numbers the same number of sets and reps across training days but you vary the load versus in the undulating periodization model that's more of a non-linear model it involves daily fluctuations in the load and volume assigned volume of assigned core resistance training exercises so here's an example on tuesday you focus on strength which you probably want to do four sets of six rep max right and then hypertrophy a little higher um, load with 10 rep oh, sorry a little low of a load with 10 rep max and that's gonna have you focus on hypertrophy 
And then Saturday, for example, you focus on power and that's gonna be a heavier uh, set or working set. So um, that is it for today. I hope that all made sense. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys on chapter 22.